What is up, guys? Welcome back for games three and four of week three of the DPL, featuring yours truly. That's right, I am in this video. My game is played in this vid, and uh, it's game four. It's not this one, obviously. You can see on screen that it's not, but I actually ended up playing pretty early this week, and I played Sunday, so it's a little weird, but I did, I did play at 1 p.m., and I actually played when I got back from a little road trip uh, to go see some friends in Ottawa, which is about two hours away from where I live. So I was gone for the weekend and made it back just in time for my game. I literally sat down at my PC, walked in the door, sat down three minutes before my game. So gives you context as to how close uh, I made it. But we're going to start off today with Pyronox's game. Now, if you've watched the last two weeks, you'll know that Pyro is 0-2 currently, and it's, it's very unconventional for Pyro. Normally, He's a player that, uh, that finds himself in the positives, and I think a lot of that has to do with the draft that we've given him, uh, essentially, that we built and that we've ha had him using. Uh, I think it has some major flaws, and it's definitely something that we're going to be looking into changing during this mids portion, uh, where all the transactions happen for players and uh, drafts. Up until now, he he hasn't been able to, to get a win with this team, unfortunately, but let's see how he does today. He's got uh, a pretty big opponent in Hiker Toad. Hiker Toad, who was in Gen 7, considered one of the top 10 players in the gen and is still playing Gen 7, as you can see here for this tournament. So obviously, definitely a scary player, always uh, a tough challenge. So let's see how he did. So I'm going to start this off with Pyro leading off with Terrakion into Zapdos. Now, as far as lead matchups go, that's about as good as it gets. It's going to immediately force the Zapdos out and the Glade comes in and we get up rocks for pretty much free. So those are up for pretty much the whole game until Zapdos defogs them. Uh, and Zapdos not being able to run boots this gen, obviously it's a little bit harder for it to come in. It really only can come in on Torn on this team. So uh, Tarak gets up rocks and we're able to switch out into Tornadus immediately as uh, Torn catches an Ice Punch. Now Glade can stay in because Glade can actually EV to live hits from Tornadus, but it doesn't know what our Torn is yet, right? It could be Specs, could be a boosting item on the flying move, could even be Z, right? Don't see any item yet. You'd, like you don't, you're not seeing leftovers at the end of the turn. And Torn is one of our Zemons, so. Galeta has to be a little bit frightened. So Bronzong comes in here, takes rocks damage, and Toxic comes out. I'm assuming Pyro was trying to catch the Zapdos coming in because you never stay in with your Gallade there, not knowing what the Torn is yet. And uh, so we fire off a Toxic, and Bronzong comes in, which is good coverage from Hiker, catching it. And now we're going to U-turn out, and we're going to get in our Mew. And uh, it's going to catch a Gyro Ball, and Block comes out. Now, this is a set that Pyro had suggested in the prep phase like at the beginning of the week. And I was like, yeah, honestly, if you can catch the Bronzong, this Mew goes crazy. It caught the Bronzong and it's about to go crazy. So rocks go up, but Mew has trapped this Bronzong here and now proceeds to start Calm Minding as this thing only really has gyro balls to hit the Mew. And uh, it's not even firing off a Toxic at this point. And now Mew goes for rest. So even if it was Toxic, we have rest. Uh, gyro comes out, does 20, they got four left. Uh, we're going to take an EQ that's going to do 15%, so not much at all. And Piker's trying to preserve Gyro PP because that's what can do most at the end of this sequence. And Pyro gets up another Calm Mind here and proceeds to rest, not trying to risk a crit on a Gyro Ball. And uh, that actually forces the attempted crit from the uh, the Bronzong, which is good that he rests that turn because he's wasting that PP. So now the, the Bronzong's down to just two Gyro Ball PP. And uh, we can cleanly go for Calm Mind here again because Gyro Crit does not knock us out. And the last move is Toxic. So Bronzong obviously is completely useless into this variant of Mew. We're going to rest this damage off uh, as well as the Toxic, catch another EQ and they are down to just two gyro balls so uh, here's another earthquake and now we're going to uh, see one more sleep turn another eq comes out and here it's a free call mine to plus five and uh, now toxic comes out now uh, pyro could uh, theoretically just call mine here again i don't know if he does i haven't rewatched it but he chooses to rest uh, i think the toxic damage plus crit might have knocked him out like that's literally the only way uh, of course Hiker's not going for it because if he doesn't get it, then the gyro balls are all wasted up and then he's never going to be able to, to hit us for good damage from that point on. So uh, another call mine coming out and another toxic. Now we are at plus six, plus six. Now the next time we wake up, it's just attack, right? So we're going to burn some more PP 
from the Bronzong by going for another Calm Mind here. And uh, now we're going to go for rest. And as you can see, we're not Sleep Talk, right? And we've got 16 rests in this gen. So we could literally burn the Bronzong just out of PP and be as healthy as possible if we really want to. Uh, which is what I feel that uh, that Pyro should have done, but I think he starts it. Yeah, he starts attacking here and immediately gets a crit on the Bronzong. I'm not sure if that mattered at plus six. Uh, he was maybe just trying to keep it really low, but he ends up getting a crit and he's at full HP anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The Bronzong would have ended up struggling and it would have had damage on us one way or another, but this way he ends up at plus six plus six with 100%. So that's great. So now we've got a plus six plus six Mew Mono Shadow Ball uh, staring down a Greninja. Let's see if they're physical comes in, goes for Dark Pulse, bounces off, does 18%. Shadow Ball comes out, 60. <laughs> so the resisted moves doing 60, the super effective ones doing uh, upwards of 20. So uh, another Dark Pulse comes out here. I think Gyro uh, Pyro just knocks out the Gren from here. Uh, he goes for a, let's see, uh, this is going to be another Shadow Ball turn into the Grand Bull. So good call uh, predicting the switch, I guess, uh, on the rest turn because you have to try to bring in a physical attacker uh, on the turn that the Mew goes for rest. Otherwise, you're not making any progress here. Uh, this thing could just rest off the, the next Dark Pulse if it doesn't get flinched. And then we're right back up to like 60% after that point once we get off the Shadow Ball or like uh, about where we are now, but a little bit healthier, actually, I think. So now the Glade comes in and uh, I think it... Goes, yeah, it goes for X-Scissor, doesn't knock us out, does 43%, and dies the Shadow Ball. So now, Mew is now revengeable, but it has taken out Bronzong, Granbull, which was an excellent Altaria check, and Mega Galliad, which is a massive threat, especially with how low our Torn was. So, Mew did its job. It absolutely did its job. And now Zapdos comes in here to revenge us. I guess knowing that it's faster and fires off a Hidden Power. Uh, not sure what Hidden Power that would be. Probably... I want to say Ice... Because uh, it hits the Nido King too that's on this team, right? So yeah, probably Ice. Uh, now Terrakion comes in and uh, there's pretty much nothing to switch into it. As you saw, it's Rocks, so it can switch up its move. Goes for Stone Edge, does 22 into the Nido Queen. Then goes for an Earthquake, Shooka triggers. Uh, but I believe we eat the Earth Power, we do. So we're EV to live that and uh, EQ knocks out the Nido Queen. And now all that's left is the 50% uh, Zapdos and the 15% Greninja does get off a, a Surf. We ended up being Pasho Berry uh, to cover pretty much uh, Specs, Gren, and as you saw, we uh, eat a hit from Shuka Nido Queen. So we pretty much had both covered. And now Empoleon comes in, uh, Dark Pulse comes out, and I think we go for, yeah, Agility. And that's going to pretty much clean up the game. As you saw, the Greninja is not choiced. So Scald is going to come out here, knock it out. And with the Zapdos being at 50%, uh, there's not too much it can do. I think it might actually uh, live here and knock us out. Uh, no, it just goes for Roost repeatedly. And uh, if it ever clicks an electric move and doesn't knock us out, then we're in Torrent. But Pyro skips all of that and just goes for Hydro Pump and knocks out the Zapdos. So finally gets a win with the team. We didn't even get to see the Rotom come out. This is the first time the Rotom has come on this team. And uh, But the Mew, the, the Mew set is just cracked like it literally did exactly what we thought it would in prep and what's funny is that we weren't seeing it work too well in mocks it didn't catch the bronzong the way that we wanted to but it did in the game so i think just excellent execution from pyro just a great job getting this win and uh now we move on to my game so here we are, it's it's game four, and it's another Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon game, as you can see on screen. And we are taking on Devin. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the DPL in the past few seasons, you would know that Devin was actually my teammate on the Wings of Wrath team that ended up winning that season in season six. And he's a very good player. He's got some really good prep. Uh, as long as he's got good help behind him, helping him with uh, with the build, and he's really active and he's, he's mocking, he figures matchups out, and he's a really, really solid player who makes very, very aggressive plays, and I know this about Devin. Now, you'll notice something about the matchup, and it's that their only form of hazard removal is Thunderous, and we have really good Thunderous checks in Zara Aura, Zygarde, and Whimsicott. They come in pretty easily on Thunderous, and it has to basically be running Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Sludge Wave, Defog. That has to be its set, or it's just useless. And as you can see, it didn't come here. Uh, it didn't even show up to this game, which means they have zero hazard removal. They brought zero hazard removal into us, thinking that they could just get an advantage from the get-go and not allowing me to get up spikes, I guess. Now, my game plan, of course, not seeing the Thunderous, is going to be get up spikes and try to go from there. So I'm actually going to lead off this game with the Necrozma. And my Necrozma is very well EV'd to take on both 
physical and special attackers on this team. As you can see, the breaking power on the team is fully reliant on choice items, right? That's a Mega Sceptile on the other side. The Garchomp can break with a Swords Dance. Everything else requires a choice item to really come, come into its full breaking power, right? So, as Necrozma, my job is to get rid of the choice item, and that is exactly what I do Turn one, I get rid of choice specs, and Primarina fires off a Moonblast and does 41%. Now I get up rocks, and it goes for Hydro Pump, and it misses out on the KO. Gets 49 on that. Now, that was a little bit of a low roll, but I think even an, uh, the absolute max roll did not knock me out from there, I'm pretty sure, is what I remember from the game. Now, I'm going to go for Morning Sun, and uh, they're going to go for another Moonblast, does 40%. Uh, gonna go for another Morning Sun here. I'm actually just trying to burn through Hydro Pump PP, actually, but he keeps going for Moon Blast, which is the weakest move, uh, or the weaker move, rather, not the weakest, but um, obviously it doesn't miss, right? So he's not risking me just ending up at, like, near full. So he is getting consistent damage here. As you can see, the, the Moon Blast does 38 that turn, did 44 the turn prior, here does 42, and now I fire off a Photon Geyser, but my Photon Geyser is physical as you can see he dropped a lot of he got a lot of special attack drops but because i was running knockoff i decided i'm just gonna go physical on the photon geyser it looks better in the, the primarina and into the dragalgy anyway so i'm just going to use that and it does 44 percent so i could potentially knock out the primarina the next turn but i do have three more morning suns and i'm going to uh just fire one off here he actually goes for aqua jet and as, as you can see we are rocky helmet uh right here and so the aqua jet ends up chipping the primarina into guaranteed range of Photon Geyser, and he fails to KO Necrozma. So I end up at 52, and now the Prim is basically forced out. And he goes into Jirachi, but being that I'm Rocky Helmet, Jirachi's not going to do much more here. Uh, I go for Photon Geyser, and the Jirachi's going to go for Stealth Rocks as I knock it off. And now all I have to do is get off one more Morning Sun, and the uh, Jirachi is basically neutralized. And even if I don't, it's still neutralized because it's going to take multiple Rocky Helmet he hits here, assuming it's not special. Right? If it is physical, it's going to take Rocky Helmet hits. If it's special, then it, it's not Body Slam pairing me, it's not Iron Head flinching me. So, I just get off a free Morning Sun here. So, I decide to stay in instead of switching out. Goes for Body Slam, gets the para, takes Rocky Helmet, and I get off the Morning Sun this turn. I don't get full paired, which is great. Now, Iron Head comes out and Jirachi does what it does best. It's going to flinch me. Uh, that's fine. And I'm just trying to get off another knockoff here to knock it out before the Helmet does, but the Helmet does do its job and knock it out. Now, I don't know if the Jirachi was properly EV'd there because I saw 17% and it just dropped, but uh, helmet, helmet does do over 16%. It does like 16.5, I believe. So there is a chance that it was just in range from the get-go. But uh, now the Primarina is going to come back in and it's going to revenge me. But as you can see, Nicole Crosman took out two Pokemon, essentially. It took out the Primarina and it took out the Jirachi. That is not even what it was here for. <laughs> and it just got rid of them both. So great job to Necrozma. And now I'm gonna go into Whimsicott and I can easily revenge this with a Moonblast, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna overpredict. I doubt he keeps a 14% Primarina. He ends up keeping it and going into his Dragalge again. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna go for Moonblast here. Cool, we get off 23%. Now I'm gonna switch out into Skarmory and uh, he's gonna go for a Toxic Spike. And I'm like, Okay, that's a little bit concerning, but to be fair, Gyarados starts off the ground, and I don't think my other two mons need that many turns in looking at my opponent's team. So, I'm just gonna do what my Skarmory is here to do and put up a spike. Now the Primarina is guaranteed dead, the Spirit Tomb's taking 25, and so is the Sceptile, and the Garchomp is taking 18% on entry. So, now I'm gonna get Dragon Tailed, and uh, I get forced out into Whimsicott, and I'm like, okay, cool. That's probably the best thing that could have come in here because I have Encore, and I lock Devin into Dragon Tail, and now I'm free to do what my Whimsicott is actually here to do, and that is put up a Light Screen as the Primarina is sacked. Now with Light Screen up, Sceptile's not a threat, Spiritomb's less of a threat, and Dragon Tailing, Toxic Spiking, Dragalgy is definitely not a threat. So, Dragalgy comes back in. I'm like, okay, cool. I think I'm still going to go Skarmory, even if... Yeah, I don't think he's looking Dragon Tail, but even if he does, it doesn't really matter. Goes for Sludge Bomb. I'm like, okay. I end up going for Whirlwind here. 
Devin clicked Sludge Bomb again. I was trying to catch the Dragon Tail and just get the, the faster Whirlwind off to Whirlwind him into something else. But he ends up going for Sludge Bomb. It's essentially the same thing because I didn't take any damage that turn. And the Sceptile now comes in. Another Dragalge comes back in as I believe I just click Brave Bird. No, I click Spikes. So right there, I probably should have clicked Brave Bird. Uh, I wasn't confident it was going to kill. I think it kills, but like if he was like an ultra bulky variant or whatever, which he shouldn't be into his Zero Aura because it naturally outspeeds, but point is I wanted more spikes, specifically because I was extremely scared of a Spear Tomb. I hadn't seen the set that I was worried about work in prep, but it was never paired with T-Spikes. And I was worried that with T-Spikes, I wasn't going to be able to handle it. So I was like, let me get off as, as much initial damage on the Spirit Tomb as possible. Let me just keep spiking. And while my light screen is up, I'm not worried about the special attackers. So Sceptile, like it doesn't matter that it's in. So I just end up going for a spike. Here Draco comes out, does a nice 14 from Adaptability, Dragalgy God, this thing sucks. And now it's dead to hazards. So uh, I believe my light screen goes down. Uh, no, it's up for three more turns. Now the Dragology comes back in, and I think I roost here. Uh, yes, I get back up to full as I roost, and now the Spirit Tomb comes in. So immediately I'm worried. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> All right, now uh, the set that I was most worried about, I will reveal this, was Shadow Ball, uh, uh, not Taunt, Shadow Ball, Pain Split, Will-O-Wisp, Calm Mind. You don't need to taunt the, uh, the Skarmory because you can just burn it and deal with it later. So, but without Taunt, you are susceptible to Whirlwind if the spikes stay up. So literally, Devin would have needed the perfect trifecta of T-spikes up on my side, no, no hazards up on his side, and that exact Spirit Tomb. That is extremely difficult to pull off, especially when you don't bring your hazard remover. <laughs> so, uh, now the Spirit Tomb ends up taunting me as I try to Whirlwind. Great play from Devin. And I think here I'm going to go for a Brave Bird as the Garchomp ends up coming in. Uh, I end up getting off 38% there and uh, I take some uh, Rocky Helmet. Uh, no, sorry, just Rough Skin and Recoil, right? From Brave Bird. And uh, I'm actually Aka Berry. Uh, it was specifically for this and HP Fire on, on Sceptile. And I'm also very specially defensive. So you'll see a Crit Fire Blast do 31 to my Skarmory and burn me and I still knock out the Garchomp. Now, without getting burned and without getting um, getting crit there, I wouldn't have been as worried about the Spirit Tomb, but now I'm panicking. Now I'm like, oh God, is this Tomb about to beat me? Wait, it's Taunt, it's probably not gonna beat me. So, Sceptile ends up coming in, it's gonna revenge me here with uh, Hidden Power Fire. And that's gonna take out the Skarmory because I'm no longer Aka Berry. Otherwise, by the way, that doesn't knock me out. Funny enough, <laughs> and uh, now I'm gonna get in Whimsicott mainly because I want to get up the light screen. Um, I'm not sure why I did because this thing should be Infiltrator anyway, so I don't know what my game plan here was <laughs> going into Whimsicott first. Oh yes, okay. I wanted to get up light screen first because I wanted to set up with Gyarados, and I didn't want to set up with Gyarados while light screen wasn't up in front of a Mega Sceptile that still hasn't like used up Leaf Storm or whatever, right? So I go Gyarados. I stay regular. Uh, goes for Dragon Pulse. Does 20% as I DD up. Uh, now here I'm. I considered. Dragon Dancing again, but seeing the Dragon Pulse do 20, I know it does 40 normally, so with a crit, it actually knocks me out. So I was like, eh, probably not a good idea. I'm just gonna knock out the Sceptile. And the Sceptile goes down, and now the, uh, the Spirit Tomb has to come in on uh, major hazards again. Uh, getting up another spike here would have been pretty inf impactful because the Spirit Tomb would have taken an extra 24% uh, over the course of its switch-ins, and I would have actually seen what item it was, uh, but that's going to get revealed here now as I go for uh, Mega and Earthquake and do 39, just miss out on the KO by 4%, and Aya Papa Berry pops. When I saw Aya Papa Berry, I was a lot less scared because I was like, you're probably not running Pain Split on an Aya Papa set, was my thought. And uh, Will-O-Wisp comes out, but now I've seen uh, Taunt Will-O-Wisp. It has to have an attacking move. And the last move, so long as it's either not Calm Mind or not Pain Split, like it can't be both, right? So there's no threat in the set whatsoever. With Taunt, it's it's completely useless. So uh, yeah, the, the, the Tomb um, ends up foul playing me here. Does a good amount of damage, 30%. Uh, I'm able to get off two Earthquakes before I go down. But ultimately, the Tomb is no longer healthy. And even if it had Pain Split on this set, my Gyarados was already way too low for the, the Tomb to take advantage of it. So down goes Gyarados. 
in comes Zygarde, and I'm able to just outrage the Spirit Tomb, and that is going to close out the game, but not before Devin leaves me off with a Sucker Punch uh, to get a little bit of damage off on Zygarde, but overall, game plan went exactly as intended. Necrozma did its job. It was an absolute beast this game. It's definitely getting thumbnail for this game. There's no way that anything else on the on the team could. Uh, ne Necro definitely put in like the most work. Skarm was second, but yeah, the defensive mons did everything, and then the offense just came in, and there was too much of it uh, around for Devin to handle. So uh, that was a great game. Uh, it was awesome to win uh, after a two and a half hour drive back from uh, from Ontario. But yeah, it's uh, I'm really liking this team. I think that it's a really strong team that we've done an excellent job in terms of filling out the roles and the Mons that are on here are just performing them to uh, absolute greatness. Like that, there's no other way to put it. it. It's just really a solid team. One of the most solid drafts that I've ever used in this tournament. So shout outs to my team for, for helping us draft this, to, to L5 for making some of the decisions like Skarmory and Whimsicott because they've come in big uh, and especially the Mega Gyarados. That was a really cool call and uh, I'm really enjoying it as, as far as uh, a member on this team goes. I think I like it even more than Mega Shark. I think it fits my play style more, but that is the guild up 3-1 on the week after this game. So great job to us so far and uh, great game from Pyronox. If you guys uh, checked out the first game in the video, of course, which I hope you did. Obviously, I hope you watched these the whole way through, but uh, yeah, great job uh, to everybody uh, this week so far. And we've got four more games to go. There's gonna be two more coming out tomorrow. So make sure that if you guys aren't subscribed yet, check the subscribe button, make sure you, you have it clicked on. If you don't, do that so that you don't miss tomorrow's video. And while you're at it, leave a like on the video, comment, let me know which of these two games was your favorite and if there's another game that you're more excited to see this game we've still got hunter's reign we've still got a few other games we got our other sv teams and uh, we got big money who won with that uh, that mudsdale last week so yeah a lot of really cool games coming up this week so uh, let me know which you guys are most excited for and uh yeah i'll leave you off on that thank you so much for watching as always and i will see you guys tomorrow hopefully peace out